All right, I watched some classic kino cinema, Hoodwinked, a film that used to be titled Hoodwinked with an exclamation mark. I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting into when I started watching this. This is another one to blame on my boyfriend who apparently watched this when they were younger and is kind of nostalgic for it. And after watching it, I understand the appeal. I understand why one would love this film. It is very goofy and zany and the way that they tie the story together, there's some satisfaction satisfaction over how information is delivered and just the pieces of the puzzle start fitting in interesting ways, sometimes clever, sometimes a little funny. There were a lot of songs in this movie and they were all very short. They were all over before you knew it and it sounded like it was all coming from the same band. And it was all kind of poorly produced, didn't sound great. Some of the songs were weird and kind of caught me off guard, like they were playing an actual concert in one scene and it was like, wow, you're screaming really loud, like this is a weird genre to have in this film. They're not all bad. It was just kind of interesting that they were in there. But holy crap, is the animation just so fucking terrible. It is scary to look at. It is, this, this is absolutely terrifying to look at. This came out in 2005. Ten years earlier, the very first feature-length computer animated movie was released, Toy Story. And Toy Story has a lot better animation than this. This was done on a budget. They outsourced the animation to the Philippines. I have no idea what was going on here. Supposedly, they were trying to mimic stop-motion style. I don't know what they mean by that, because I don't see anything resembling resembling stop motion in this film. I don't know if they're trying to suggest that the jerky movements of the characters is reminiscent of stop motion. I don't know what they're trying to say when people say that. So I, I have no idea. There's points in the film where characters are clipping through themselves. That's kind of weird. There's a point later in the film where Red Riding Hood, she's got something covering her mouth. And so I was thinking, okay, as soon as they remove that in the story, that's just going to take place out of frame. And then that exact thing happened and I was very amused with myself. There was another point in the film where there are two characters moving at a fast speed and I could see the exact same assets, the flowers in the background being repeated after a few seconds. It's like, oh, there's those two exact same flowers next to each other again. That was kind of funny. It's a very disturbing looking film and it's, it's just so off-putting. The eyelashes on the big guy, I forget his name, when you get closer shots of his face, it just, it looks absolutely fucking terrifying. The squirrel character. It just, I don't know what they're trying to do with this movie. Actually, I do know what they were trying to do with this movie. They were trying to make Shrek. They were trying to capitalize off of the success of Shrek by doing this fairy tale parody satire kind of like, oh, we're doing silly things and it's uh, not Disney. We're sh really Shrekking this up, guys. We're Shrekking it. Happy Shrek. That's exactly what they were trying to do. And some things to appreciate about this movie in terms of how wacky it gets. It has kind of like a uh, Rashomon or Pulp Fiction style of storytelling in the, the sense that it's non-linear, but the animation weighs it down quite a lot. A lot of the humor does not land. A lot of the jokes are predictable. I can see them coming from a mile away. I'm like, oh, you're gonna parody The Matrix. Oh, wow. Just typical 2005 shit. The whole whodunit angle, I was like, okay, it's this character, and then it was. It just seemed pretty obvious. Like, it's not a super well-constructed story just because there are satisfying reveals. Like, oh, they weren't actually doing that. They were doing that. It's like, okay, those things are, I guess, inherently satisfying to a certain degree, but it's still not a great story, and the animation's just terrifying. I could not. Sorry, everybody. Weird-ass fucking movie. Ugh. Just absolutely disgusting. Insane. Three out of ten. I then saw another Kino film called Over the Hedge. This was one year later, and the animation is incredible compared to Hoodwinked. I just don't even understand how someone could look at the trailer for Hoodwinked and go to a theater and see that movie. Like, I, it's absolutely insane to me. Even if you ignore how far animation has come today since Hoodwinked, just looking at other animated films that were out at the same time, it's just, I, it's absolutely insane. I, it, it's just disturbing. It's just disturbing. Over the Hedge is just a fucking masterpiece in comparison from the perspective of animation, at least. It's honestly less entertaining from a writing perspective. <laughs> it's re really not a great story, kind of derivative. It's a movie that's very clearly trying to be other things. It just doesn't have its own distinct personality, unfortunately. For some reason, they've got Bruce Willis voice acting as the raccoon, who is kind of the main character, but not really. It seems like the main character is the turtle, who is the most annoying, pathetic character ever. I could not stand watching this turtle. I hate the turtle. I hate him so much. He's responsible for everything that goes wrong. He is just so irritating to look at and to listen to. He 
thinks he's being moral when he's not, and he's just ruining everybody's day and just being a whiny little fucking bitch. And I wanted to kill him in a video game. I wanted to kill that turtle in a video game. I wanted to kill him in a video game. They do have a video game. I never played it, actually. Maybe I'll get to kill him then. His voice acting sucked horrendously. Gary Shandling did the voice. And because he was the main character, he kept getting into all of these weird slapstick situations because the movie's like, oh, there's gotta be some crazy scenes where they get tossed around and they're flying here and they're flying there. But the voice acting during all of these parts is just so held back. It's like, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Oh no, uh. How are you even a voice actor? Why, why are you acting? That's not acting, that's nothing. Let go of your fucking ego, honestly. It's equivalent to a child acting who's not even really an actor. So I don't know what the fuck they were doing with this movie. I don't know what the casting process was like. Maybe nepotism or bribes or some sort of crimes. Not sure what was happening, but holy crap, he sucks. It was like the get me out of here guy, you know? Yeah, get me out of here. Yeah, he didn't do anything. Uh, uh. You're pretending to scream. You're not really screaming at all. You're not even trying to make it seem like you're screaming. Stop it. <laughs> Steve Carell plays a squirrel, and it's basically the same character as the squirrel from Hoodwinked. He's uh, very hyper. They give him caffeine at one point. He gets more hyper. That's literally just what happened in the other movie. So that was kind of weird watching these two basically back to back. Although the execution of how that happened in this movie was actually pretty cool, pretty entertaining. I liked the sequence. I digged, I dug, I doged the way that that was presented. It's not the first time it's been done or anything, but it was a nice change of pace. It was a nice artistic choice that they made. We got Wanda Sykes as a skunk and they do some weird shit in the movie. They're like, no, you're not a skunk. I see a fox deep down in there. And they like give her a makeover and she like pretends to be a cat to like seduce a cat, which is literally just the exact same thing as Pepe Le Pew, except the characters are different, I guess. Like just a skunk pretending to be a cat to fuck a cat. But I, I just found it weird that they were like, oh, there's a fox under there. And they just played it off seriously. And I don't even think she was offended by that. They were just kind of like, oh yeah, skunks do suck. It's like, what? Why are, you, why are you dissing on their race, bro? Why you gotta be racist about it? On the outside, maybe. But I'm looking inside, Stella, and I see a fox. And all we gotta do is get her out. That's fucked up. Why, why'd you put that in a kid's movie? There's a little bit of good in everybody. That's fucked up. Avril Lavigne plays the girl possum that has the eye makeup and she sucks. She sucks as a voice actor. She sucks as a celebrity. She's annoying. I don't know why people think she's punk. She's always been corporate. You're crazy if you think otherwise. The conflict in this movie is kind of annoying in the sense that they don't communicate with each other and by the end of the movie they're they're like, oh, if you just told us then that would have been fine. That movie just happened because you lied and didn't feel like telling them that thing. Like, okay. There's babies in it for no reason. And even though they're doing really dangerous shit, they're like, oh, there are these traps that are gonna go off and kill us. We gotta go in there. And they bring the babies along as if they couldn't just like leave the babies somewhere. They bring everybody. And then shit goes wrong because the babies are stupid. It's like, okay, the babies are there. I don't know why you brought the babies. They're fucking annoying. But not nearly as annoying as the turtle who should be, um, am I allowed to say executed? If we as a society eat turtles, I think I'm allowed to say that about a turtle character. I would like him to be euthanized. Yes. What an awful character. I I hate this fucking turtle. Get him out of here. Get him out of my memory. Get me out of the universe that has this turtle in it. I would like to see this turtle suffer a bit. I would like to see him in an uncomfortable situation, just not having a good time. I've never felt this way about anybody. I do not wish pain on anybody except the turtle from Over the Hedge. What a fucking annoying character. Get him out of the movie. What was weird about this movie is they were very clearly trying to emulate a lot of the success of Ice Age. The squirrel was trying a lot to be like Scrat, obviously. They like zoomed out, you know, and you saw Planet Earth. I was I was like, oh, that's like kind of a similar style to Ice Age. If I think about the dynamic of the characters in Ice Age, which worked really well, and from what I remember, Ice Age is a pretty good movie. You got the mammoth, who's like the straight character, and then you got Sid, who's the wacky character. In this movie, it's like, okay, you've got enough straight characters already without the turtle, but then they feel as though they need someone to balance the raccoon character, who's like a lot more extroverted and enthusiastic and, you know, trying to get into trouble and like, oh, hey, everybody, would you do this? And they'd feel the need to have this turtle character there be like, no, 
That's bad. You can't do that. The character is exactly like when Confused Matthew was saying Simba was Draco Malfoy and doing the voice. He was like, I want to be the king of Pride Rock. That's how the turtle is. It's like when Confused Matthew was insulting Simba. When You can't do that. I finally understand Confused Matthew's hatred for Simba because this is basically what that reminds me of. For some reason, they felt the need to have the turtle in the story to balance out the raccoon, but then the turtle just ate up all the screen time. The raccoon's much more interesting, even though Bruce Willis isn't a great voice actor or anything. You add nothing to the story. You drag down every scene that you're in. You're not fun in the serious moments. You're not fun in the goofy moments. You're not fun in the action moments. You're not fun at any moment in the entire fucking movie. I hate you. Make like a turtle and be out of my life, you idiot. There were a lot of songs in this movie, not as many as Hoodwinked. They were a lot better produced than Hoodwinked. They were a lot better mixed and mastered. By the end credits, I saw that it was like, what, Ben Folds? It was so weird. I was like, okay, that's why it sounds familiar. Ben Folds did the fucking music. Holy crap, what the hell? I would like to Ben Fold the turtle in half so that he suffocates forever in the fiery pits of Mount Doom. So we're gonna get me out of here because I can't deal with this stupid fucking turtle. Ben Folds apparently did music for Hoodwinked also, so a lot of weird similarities with these films. But, I mean, they were both computer animated movies that came out within a year of each other that existed to make money and were kind of creatively bankrupt for the most part and just derivative and trying to be other things. So you would get a good amount of similarities. Anyway, this movie was not bad. Would have been better without the turtle. Most of my criticisms come from the turtle. Get him out of here. Get me out of here. All right, piece of shit. Five out of 10, you asshole. Get out of here, you stupid. You look at his stupid face. Look at that stupid fucking look. You're a bad character. Your voice acting is bad. Get under the hedge. Get six feet under the hedge, how about? I'm done with you. Five out of 10. I also, in the same night, watched Fear.com, which is a movie that somebody asked me to review. They sent me a, a DVD of like 10 years ago and I never did. And they were like, oh, it's so bad. You should talk about it. And so I always had it in my mind as like, okay, this is like a funny bad movie. And I also thought that I had watched this when I was younger, but I really don't know because there was no part of, of this movie that was even remotely familiar to me when I watched it this time. Unfortunately, 97, 8% of this movie is is not funny bad. It's just really, 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 really boring. It is a film that does not respect time. <laughs> it does not respect the audience's time or the audience's brains. It is insanely derivative. It came out in 2002. It is essentially trying to be Seven, but also The Ring. And I know The Ring came out in 2002. It actually came out shortly after this movie, but Ring You, the film that The Ring is based on, came out obviously years before. So this this was trying to be Ringu, I guess. And holy fuck is this movie ever just such a fucking slog. Basically, the premise is that there's a website that if you go on the website, you'll die in 48 hours. But the structure of this movie is just so incompetent and incomprehensible that it's impossible to even get anything interesting out of that as a narrative. When I give a summary of the premise like that, immediately, you might have in your brain a basic idea of how the structure of the movie should go. You know, you get like an opening death and then the main character does some investigating and then they find the website and then they start hallucinating and it's like, oh no, I have to find out before the time runs out. You know, just basically like the ring. The moment that the main character visits the website is over 45 minutes through the movie. The movie is an hour and 41 minutes long. We're almost an hour into the movie before the main character even visits the website. And I don't know why they would waste so much time in the first hour of the movie. You could have cut out almost the entire first hour of the movie. <laughs> it's insane. It's 50 minutes in and barely anything happens before that point. There's a lot of pretend, ooh, we're discovering things and there's some German people that like left the video and what did this say and blah, 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 blah. But none of it is intriguing. None of it is interesting. You gotta leave some treats, you know? You gotta leave some bits for the audience to pick up and just to help us along if you're gonna be so slowly paced. You gotta give us good action 
acting, interesting camera work, interesting shots of any kind. I don't know, some cool deaths or some scary moments. Oddly enough, the score to this movie wasn't terrible. The music was something that I felt was actually trying, unlike the rest of the film. Or maybe the rest of the film was trying and it's just so incredibly incompetent that it didn't really matter. One of the scary things in the film, quote unquote scary, is just a white ball, like a beach ball, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't know what it was supposed to be, like a, a plastic rubber ball. It would roll and people would be like, oh, and then it would like turn into bugs or something. And it just wasn't scary. It wasn't scary at all. It, it kept coming back. And I'm like, wow, you've really chosen this visual motif here. <laughs> like you've really chosen this as the scary thing that's going to keep following characters after they've visited the website. There's also a real killer that's killing people. And so there's two websites. It's absolutely incomprehensible. There's a website that kills you if you visit it, but there's also another website where there's a murderer live streaming his murders and he's got like a warehouse. He's like dissecting some girls. He talks like the Dark Knight Joker <laughs> before the Dark Knight, which is really funny. Commerce, seduction, proselytizing. <laughs> Politics. Heath, you gotta give some credit, okay? When's Heath Ledger gonna give credit to this film? I don't know. TikTok, we're waiting, Heath Ledger. I'll wait all day. So they're trying to investigate the killer, but then they come across the website also, and they thought that the people that were dying from the website were dying from Ebola at first, but then they're like, no, it's not. And so they were just trying to figure that out. When they finally show the website, it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. It's the only entertaining part of the movie when they finally reach the website, because if you were to guess what this website was supposed to be called for fear.com, what would you guess? Fear.com? No. It's fear.com.com. That's the website they go to. They go to fear.com.com. I don't know if it's because they didn't get the domain to fear.com, so they changed it. And they're just like, well, we'll just do fear.com.com. We can't use another word. We can't use like spooky.com. Yeah, you do fathreer.com or some shit. Do I'm scary boo.com. Like, I don't know. Pick another word. Use a thesaurus. It was really funny when they revealed that. And it was not supposed to be a joke. And I was having a blast at that moment, hoping that the rest of the movie would just be that funny, but the rest of the movie is just still really boring and pathetic. The second half of the movie is not nearly as boring as the first half of this movie because some supernatural stuff winds up happening. They keep overkilling the cinematography with Dutch angles and this weird stretched perspective. This weird stretched look it looks really shitty, not scary. They solve the mystery at the end and the website that kills you in 48 hours was made by a ghost. Because <laughs> ghosts can make websites. They were killing random people as a way to exact revenge on the killer who has the other website. So she was a victim of the killer guy who's a real person who made a website. She became a ghost and she made a website as a ghost. <laughs> called fear.com.com. <laughs> she killed a bunch of random people that didn't deserve it because those people didn't kill the killer within 48 hours. And they also didn't know they were supposed to, which is kind of mean. Like it, they weren't really given proper information. It was, she was like, are you ready to play this game on the website? And they're like, okay, I guess so. And then they just hallucinate and die. Yeah, I don't understand what the reasoning for anything was in this movie. It is absolutely insane. Very incomprehensible, very stupid. That summary right there is the most entertaining it gets is just by trying to think about what the overall plot of the movie was, which is just honestly baffling. It was an hour and 41 minutes that felt like three and a half hours. It was very upsetting. According to Wikipedia, the ghost kills after 48 hours because the killer tortured her for 48 hours before killing her. Oh, very cool. So if the killer killed her in one hour and then she was a ghost and she made a website, she'd be like, you want to play? And then just a random person logs on and then they she kills them in one hour and they have no time to figure out the mystery and kill the killer. But anyway, yeah, the main character, I guess, helped the, get, the ghost get revenge? The ghost gets revenge on the killer. What a gigantic, awful piece of trash. There's no wonder why this is so poorly received. It is an absolute dumpster fire. Should not be watched by anyone. One out of 10, easy one out of 10. The music didn't save it. It is just such a joyless experience. So you're welcome, whoever sent me this DVD like 10 fucking years ago. Finally got a review out of it. Thank you. Bye.